Hello and a very good evening. You're watching Rajya Sabha Television. This is the news tonight. I'm Frank Pereira. Here are the latest headlines. Riding on the back of falling food and vegetable prices, wholesale price inflation touches fire low of 3.74%. RBI rejects industry's demand for rate cut. Amid complaints of slowdown in flood rescue work in Jammu and Kashmir, a fight over relief breaks out on the sidelines. India signed seven agreements with Vietnam. They include oil exploration in the South China Seas and a subtle warning for China. BJP and Shiv Sena disagree over seat sharing for the assembly elections but continue to hold talks in Maharashtra. And UK Prime Minister David Cameron embarks on a spirited campaign to dissuade Scots from ceding. Queen Elizabeth II urges voters to think carefully. Our top focus on the bulletin tonight. The wholesale price index has fallen to a five-year low in the month of August. The WPI figure stands at 3.74% in August versus 5.19% in July. Buoyed by the numbers, RBI Governor Raghuram Rajan said it meant the economy was on the path to recovery. Here's more. Softening prices of food items, including vegetables, pulled down the WPI inflation to a five-year low of 3.74% in August. The August inflation declined from 5.19% in July, while it was 6.99% in the same month last year. The figure for August is the lowest since October 2009, when it stood at 1.8%. Buoyed by these numbers, India Inc. has raised the pitch for lowering of interest rates to boost industrial output. But that won't happen anytime soon as the RBI insists there is no point yet in cutting rates as it will see prices going up again. Inflation is coming down. That was the news on, uh, on Friday. And this is consistent with our forecasts. And, uh, and, and I'm glad that it's staying with our, our forecasts. Bottom line, macro indicators are improving but still have some way to go before we can declare that we are out of the woods. Uh, I'm, I'm hopeful that it's only a matter of time. The RBI is targeting a retail inflation of 8% by January next year and 6% by January 2016. Meanwhile, Rajan has also said that the government must take advantage of the lowest oil prices in a year to deregulate diesel. Crude oil prices have fallen 14% since June to $96.38 per barrel. This, together with the monthly price increase of up to 50 paisa a litre, has trimmed losses on the fuel to just 8 paisa per litre. We need to seize this moment uh, to eliminate diesel subsidies completely. We can, of course, wait, but the moment may leave us and we may be back to subsidising. The next revision in diesel prices is due at the end of this month. Going by the present trend, the under-recovery or the difference between the imported cost and the retail selling price will be wiped out with a minimal hike. If the government deregulates diesel prices, it will empower oil companies to change rates in tandem with cost like they do in the case of petrol. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Meanwhile, RBI Governor Raghuram Rajan was all praise for the Jandan launched by Prime Minister Modi recently. Raising the scheme, Rajan said that this financial inclusiveness would in turn lead to increased financial savings. But he also cautioned banks on the risks involved in hunting for numbers, asking them not to compromise on the core objectives of the program. Of course, the biggest recent development is the Pradhan Mantri Jan Dhan Yojana. Clearly, universal financial access has to be a national priority and it is certainly something that is well worth for the government to push. If every Indian household is connected to the financial system, you can get a tremendous increase in financial savings.
Well, the Supreme Court has directed the Centre and the Jammu and Kashmir government to ensure that relief and medical facilities should reach all those affected by the massive floods. The top court's views come amid reports of anguish over slow relief work. So far, close to 2.5 lakh people have been rescued in the valley. Here's a ground report. While rescue and relief operations continue in the valley, victims have been complaining about the slow pace of relief work. One of the key reasons being lack of connectivity. The crucial Jammu Srinagar Highway is still closed. I am at Pantha Chowk, the bypass road that leads to Jammu on my left and to Srinagar city on my right. This highway has been closed since September 6th. All the shops, all the houses, are submerged in water. The roads are damaged. It is a state in which river is flooded, nature's fury is at its worst, and the plight of people cannot be fathomed. This area in Poonch has been cut off for the last two weeks with more than 50,000 people stranded. There are other places in the state where people are still awaiting relief material. Road Hearing a petition on rescue and relief work, the Supreme Court has asked the centre and the state government to take more steps to rehabilitate flood victims. It has also asked to make relief materials and medicines available to all those affected. अभी भी काफी हद तक पांच फुट सात फुट दस फुट तक पानी है वहाँ कई घरों तक वहाँ कोई चीज आदमी नहीं पहुँच सका ना ही कोई टीम टीम वहाँ पहुँच सकी कोई हमारे पास जरिया नहीं है हमें एक्सग्रीशिया दी जाए जिसमें कोर्ट ने कंसर्न दिखाया और ने कोर्ट ने स्टेट कमिशन स्टेट गवर्नमेंट को सेंटर को एडवाइस दिया � the centre has submitted a list of steps taken and said all necessary items are being supplied. So far, close to 2,50,000 people have been rescued by defence personnel and NDRF teams. JNK Power Minister also said that electricity has been restored in most places. Bijli lagbag 80-90% area mein jo hai restore ho chuki hai. Jis area mein pani hai, us area mein humne restore nahi kiya. Isliye ki logon ko current lage, kahi usse koi problem na aajaye. But there are still thousands of victims that are waiting to be rescued. After the massive rescue operation, relief work has become the sano shore of all agencies in Jammu and Kashmir. We are at the Srinagar airport where a number of people have been stranded since long. Let's try and speak to some of them. When you came to the relief camp, you had to have to drink water? No, 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 no. The devastating flood has instilled fear psychosis in people. All that they want now is to reach back their homes safely. Meanwhile, massive dewatering operations have been launched in Srinagar. Efforts are on to drain out flood water using around 30 water pumps. With inputs from Kriti Mishra and Ravindra Sharan, Bureau Report for Rajya Sabha TV. Our correspondent Kriti Mishra joins us for more on the phone line from Srinagar. Kriti, uh, in the past, of course, over the last few days, we've seen several reports of uh, large-scale vandalism. We've seen the people on the ground there vent their ire on uh, uh, the defence forces and others as well. What's the situation as far as that front is concerned in Srinagar at the moment? Exactly, Frank. At rescue camps, drinking water is the most precious thing to possess. The rescue teams are trying to supply food in different corners. But there's a certain sense of anger, disappointment in the public. Today, many journalists were also heckled besides army and NDRF teams. In certain areas, as soon as people see the camera and a mic, they just lose their tranquility and blame reporters for distorting facts and accuse army of providing relief material to select few. In fact, today, Frank, when I was out reporting, I was castigated and shattered by a number of them. But the silver lining is that the Army, NDRF and other agencies have been very patient and they've reiterated, come hail, come storm, the rescue and relief operations shall continue. Back to you, Frank. Kriti, we've also seen from the visuals that are being beamed back to us over here that, you know, there is still a lot of water logging on the streets of Srinagar. What's being done on that front to try and ensure that the water is, is drained out from uh, the low-lying areas especially? 
Frank's huge suction pumps uh, have been uh, installed in different places to, you know, really take water out of the streets. And because of water, fear of pollution of water sources, the threat of outbreak of waterborne disease is lurking. So doctors fear spread of cholera, hepatitis A, jaundice, diarrhea. And uh, Union Health Ministry and uh, Family Welfare Ministry has recruited a lot of doctors. A lot of uh, engineers from Delhi have also come. But that problem remains. And uh, people are trying that as soon as... All right, Kuti Mishra, thank you so much for joining us there with that update from Srinagar and bringing us up to date with the latest as to what's happening there on the ground in the flood-affected state of Jammu and Kashmir. Now, as the people of Jammu and Kashmir struggle to come to terms with the vast scale of the disaster that has devastated their state, politics surrounds the rescue and relief efforts. The Youth Congress has claimed that Jammu and Kashmir Liberation Front leader Yasin Malik forcibly took over the boat that they were using to distribute relief material and used it to distribute material of his own. The action of the separatists comes at a time when questions are being raised about their relevance in the face of this calamity. I feel that relief, whoever does today, should do it without any political uh, political. Interest. Uh, int uh, interests, because this is on the basis of humanity, and people from all over the country are wanting to send something to, as uh, even as a token to people of Jammu and Kashmir. Why should you take the boat of uh, some people, in this case Youth Congress, who were distributing relief work? Why don't you go and get another boat? If you want to uh, distribute, also add. Don't take away and then not distribute. Chalo, unho ne hamare se boat china hota and then gone distributing themselves because the food was baby milk powder for children. The children are hungry for four days. You want to do politics, I don't. The government uh, has come out with some uh, numbers, some helpline numbers as far as the flood is concerned. These are the numbers on your screens. You can call this for any kind of assistance or help. Moving on now, the seat sharing talks between the BJP and the Siv Shiv Sena for the assembly polls have hit a deadlock in Maharashtra. Both parties are adamant about not backing down, but both parties are continuing with talks. Here's more. In a rapidly escalating contest of who will blink first, the Shiv Sena and the BJP inflexible on their positions on seat sharing in Maharashtra. Riding on the back of their best ever Lok Sabha election performance, the BJP wants to contest 135 assembly seats, the same number of seats it wants to concede to the Shiv Sena. The proposal which has been given by the state leadership under the mandate of the central leadership uh, to the Shiv Sena chief and it's too early to uh, make any comment on that. But as long as the negotiations are on, it would be inappropriate for us to make any comment. In 2009, the Shiv Sena contested 169 seats while the BJP fought on 119. The Sena wants the BJP to settle for the same formula this time as well. What's more, it wants the BJP to concede the Chief Minister's post to the Sena. Party chief Uddhav Thakre, however, clarified that they are still talking to their long-standing allies. The BJP and the Sena have been the oldest allies in Maharashtra and have fought all elections together. But this is perhaps for the first time that the disagreements between the two are widening at an alarming rate. Meanwhile, even as the disagreements continue, BJP President Amit Shah will be kicking off the party's election campaign from the 19th of September. Sham Sundar, Rajya Sabha Television. Meanwhile, all is not well with the ruling Congress-NCP alliance in Maharashtra also. 
on Monday, nine independent MLAs, including a minister who had defeated Congress candidates in the last assembly polls, joined the NCP. Deputy Chief Minister and NCP leader Rajit Pawar said that his party is firm on contesting in 144 seats out of the 288. His reactions came after reports that Congress is looking for candidates in all seats. NCP had contested in 114 seats in the 2009 assembly elections. The party said that the ball is now in the Congress's court to accept a 50-50 seat-sharing deal. However, the Congress is confident that the alliance will hold in Maharashtra. पिछले 15 वर्षों से कांग्रेस और राष्ट्रवादी कांग्रेस का गठबंधन महाराष्ट्र में है और इस गठबंधन में 15 वर्षों तक महाराष्ट्र के सरकार में काम किया मिलजुल करके और उसके बाद दिल्ली में भी 10 वर्षों तक हम लोगों ने साथ साथ काम किया और मुझे उम्मीद है कि हमारे बीच सीटों के बंटवारों के लेकर के जो थोड़ा बहुत एक खींचतान है वो आने वाले कुछ दिनों में खत्म हो जाएगा Going on now, the Supreme Court on Monday directed advocate Prashant Bhushan to reveal the source of his information regarding CBI chief Ranjit Sinha's meetings with 2G scam and Colgate accused. The Apex Court asked Bhushan to name the whistleblower in the sealed envelope on the next date of hearing on September 22nd and said it will go into the merits of the allegations after knowing the source of his information. In his reply, Bhushan claimed he could stake his life on the authenticity of the guest list provided. The CBI director has questioned the very existence of the entries, saying that 90% of them were fudged. Supreme Court has directed Mr. Prashant Bhushan to file on affidavit as to the source from which he got this information with regard to Bhushan. So he has to not disclose that source in Supreme Court. Basically, I had argued that uh, the law of the land is the same for everyone. He, Mr. Prashant Bhushan can't say that the law for him is different than what is for everybody else. Well, as India's Mars orbiter mission races for its trust with the red planet on September 24th, Indian space scientists are gearing up for the critical manoeuvre of the spacecraft. Addressing a press conference today, ISRO said that it, is co it was confident about the mission's success going by its performance so far. The spacecraft has covered 98% of its 300-day odyssey so far. The mission, India's first interplanetary one, was launched on November 5, 2013 from the spaceport of Sri Harikota in Andhra Pradesh. If the 450 crore rupees mission turns out to be a success, ISRO would be the fourth space agency in the world to have sent a mission to Mars. On 22nd, we are going to have a test fire of the LAM engine combined with the fourth trajectory correction manoeuvre. And after that, 24th morning, we are going to conduct the crucial Mars orbit insertion. That is the event stated for 24th. If we succeed on 24th, India will be the first Asian country to do a Mars mission. And in the whole world, India will be the first country to do it on a maiden first mission. Let's now get you all the other national news and updates in our segment nationwide. Union Urban Development Minister M. Venkaya Naidu has said that Vijayawada and Vishakhapatnam in Andhra Pradesh will be developed as smart cities. He also said Vijayawada, Guntur and Tenali would be provided metro rail services. The decision is part of the centre's plan to develop 100 smart cities in the country. Notably, the state government had recently announced that the new capital of Andhra Pradesh would be located around Vijayawada. The Aamadmi Party is planning to contest municipal corporation elections in Haryana according to a report in the Hindustan Times. Notably, the party is not contesting the assembly elections in the state. While addressing media persons, AAP leader Yogendra Yadav disclosed his party's strategy saying that the decision to refrain from the state elections is to focus on Delhi elections. A delegation of visually impaired children from the National Association for the Blind met Vice President Mohammad Hamid Ansari on Monday. They pinned the flag on the self of Vice President Ansari to observe All India Flag Day. The VP also interacted with the children and donated a token amount for their welfare. Time for a short break now, but on the other side, US-led coalition discussed national action to tackle the threat of Islamic State. All that and much more. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. You're watching Rajya Sabha Television. President Pranab Mukherjee today started his four-day visit to Vietnam by witnessing the signing of seven pacts between the two countries. Foremost among them was an agreement to explore two oil blocks in the South China Sea. Also in a decisive message aimed at China that finds itself in the center of territorial disputes in these seas, both sides call for freedom of navigation in the South China Sea. Barely a month after Prime Minister Narendra Modi sounded a veiled note of disapproval on China during his visit to Japan, India on Monday joined Vietnam in asserting that freedom of navigation in the disputed waters of South China Sea shouldn't be impeded. In a message directed at China, both nations urged collective commitment by everyone to the code of conduct in the South China Sea. In the presence of President Pranam Mukherjee, both countries signed seven pacts to strengthen bilateral ties. The first being an agreement between ONGC and Petro Vietnam to explore two additional blocks off Vietnam in the contested waters of the South China Sea. The next agreement was between Jet Airways and Air Vietnam. Under their new air connectivity deal, a daily flight connecting Delhi, Mumbai and Ho Chi Minh City will be operational from 5th November. Besides this, India will also extend a line of credit to Vietnam. Other agreements were on cooperation in agriculture, animal health, customs and youth affairs and skill development. India and Vietnam are looking to diversify trade to achieve a target of 15 billion US dollars by 2020. Bilateral trade stands at 8 billion US dollars at present. They also highlighted scope to expand ICT, science and technology, space and other areas. After a warm welcome ceremony, President Pranam Mukherjee started his Vietnam visit with a wreath-laying ceremony at the War Memorial. President Pranam Mukherjee held talks with his Vietnamese counterpart Trong Tan Sang on other international and regional issues. He will be travelling to Ho Chi Minh City on Tuesday. Bureau Report, Raj Sabha TV. More international news now. French President François Hollande on Monday opened a conference in Paris on the crisis in Iraq. The aim of the conference was to bring together members of a US-led coalition. Hollande called for united international action to tackle the threat from Islamic State militants. Here's a report. Iraqi President Fuad Masoum asked for airborne operations to be continued regularly against terrorist sites in Iraq during a joint news conference with French President François Hollande in Paris. Masoum is in Paris attending the Iraq conference along with foreign ministers from the main European states, the five permanent members of the UN Security Council, Iraq's neighbours and Gulf Arab states Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait and the UAE. The leaders gathered to discuss political security and humanitarian aspects of tackling Islamic State. لقد مارس تنظيم داعش خلال هذه الأشهر جرائم إبادة جماعية وجرائم تطهير عرقي وديني ضد الآلاف من المواطنين. Des Irakiens contre les terroristes et donc aussi le nôtre. Et nous devons nous engager ensemble. Et c'est le sens de cette conférence. Au côté des autorités irakiennes, clairement, loyalement et fortement. Meanwhile, British Prime Minister David Cameron chaired a meeting of the government's Emergency Response Committee on Sunday under growing pressure to sanction airstrikes after an Islamic State video showed the beheading of a British hostage. Footage of the murder of David Haynes by IS militants fighting in Iraq and Syria means Cameron is under pressure to get much tougher with the IS. David Haynes was a British hero. The fact that an aid worker was taken, held and brutally murdered at the hands of ISIL sums up what this organization stands for. The United States is taking direct military action. We support that. British tornadoes and surveillance aircraft have been helping with intelligence gathering and logistics. This is not about British combat troops on the ground. It is about working with others to extinguish this terrorist threat. The United States has already unveiled an outline plan to fight the Islamic militants simultaneously in Iraq and Syria. It believes it can forge a solid alliance despite hesitancy among some partners and questions over the legality of action, notably in Syria, where the militant group has a power base. Bureau report, Raja Sabha TV. British Prime Minister David Cameron issued a final appeal to Scots not to leave the United Kingdom just days before 4 million vote in a referendum. Earlier, Queen Elizabeth II made her first comments about the Scottish independence vote, asking Scots to think carefully about their future. 
British Prime Minister David Cameron and First Minister Alex Salmond hit the campaign trail in Scotland ahead of Thursday's independence vote. Cameron issued a warning to Scots that a vote for independence will lead to a permanent split from the UK. He promised that he could deliver a stronger Scottish Parliament if they vote no. On Sunday, Queen Elizabeth II also broke her silence on the referendum and urged Scots to think carefully about the future before they vote. But the British monarch was careful to maintain a neutral stand as required constitutionally. Whatever the outcome of Thursday's vote, Queen Elizabeth II is likely to be the Queen of Scotland as well. The Queen's statement comes even as a series of opinion polls showed the two campaigns are in effect neck and neck. What we're saying is, you know, if you've got any doubts about this, then don't do it. You wouldn't do it in any personal decision you would make. And this decision isn't just for you, it's for your family, it's for your country. Which is why we think people will say no thanks on Thursday. So we've got the big battalions trotted out, organised by Downing Street to say the seven plagues of Egypt will descend upon Scotland on Friday if we vote yes on Thursday. But I think people in Scotland are, are now of an attitude that no, this is a prosperous nation. They want it to be a just society. And that's why this joyful, liberating and, and empowering campaign is moving its way forward. More than 4 million Scots as well as English and foreign residents are eligible to vote in the referendum. The question on the ballot paper will simply ask, should Scotland be an independent country? Bureau Report, Rajasabha TV. For all the action from the world of sports, here's the latest sports beat. Serbia's Filip Krajinovic denied India place in the Davis Cup World Group by defeating Yuki Bambri in the decisive reverse singles on Monday. Serbia clinched the playoff tie 3-2. Krajinovic's 6-3-6-4-6-4 victory quashed India's hopes of returning to the World Group after three years. Roger Federer defeated Italy's Fabio Fognini 6-2, 6-3, 7-6 in straight sets to give the Swiss an unassailable 3-1 lead. Federer's win secured Switzerland a place in the final of the Davis Cup. Switzerland has never won the tournament and has not played in a final since 1992. They will now play against France in the final in November. Five-time world champion Vishwanathan Anand started his campaign at the Bilbao Final Masters with a win over former FIDE world champion Ruslan Ponomori of Ukraine on Monday. Anand got three points for his win where he outclassed uh, his opponent in all departments of the game. This is Anand's last tournament ahead of the World Championship rematch against Magnus Carlsen in November. That's it on this edition of The Bulletin. Thank you so much for watching. Good night.